Welcome to Frankly Speaking with me, Uncle Pote, JJ Tabani. We're coming to you live from Studio 12 here in Auckland Park in Johannesburg. August is Women's Month in South Africa, and in this month, sadly, we have had to bury uh, various women of different generations. Yesterday, we laid Mama Sobu to rest. Two weeks ago, uh, we buried Kensani Maseko. May both their souls rest in peace. The big question is how do we pick up their spears? by creating an environment of peaceful existence for the women of South Africa. How long can their current situation of gender-based violence continue? Do we have enough programs to change this situation for women in our country? And what about the economic deprivation for women? Are there, are there plans in place enough to engender confidence? Is the gender question really at the top of our nation's agenda or does it just come up only during Women's Month? Let's take a look at what was said at this year's official Women's Day celebrations. The time has come for us to come with proactive programs that are about the protection of women, not a programs that are always reactive. We don't have to wait until a two-year-old child is raped and then respond. Fellow men, when a woman says, I don't want, I don't want means I don't want. I don't love you anymore means I don't love you anymore. Fellow men, women of South Africa have human rights like all of us. Patriarchy remains a defining feature of our society. We men must get it into our heads that we do not own women nor do we own their bodies and that we should never seek to dominate them. To help me understand what the political parties in our country see as a way forward on the gender agenda, my guest tonight, uh, uh, Mandisa Mashiro, the EFF leader in Gauteng, as well as Professor uh, Noma French Mbobo from the DA. Let's go talk frankly to them. All right, just to say before we start there that we have invited the ANC uh, to be part of this debate and uh, we have in vain, but we keep trying, we're trying to connect one of their spokespersons on the line to join the conversation. Hopefully we'll be able to do that before the show ends. Ladies, uh, good evening and welcome. Mm, good evening. Thank you. Thank you for having us on the show. Well, we don't, we're at the end of another Women's Month, you know, and the, the generally the commentaries that people seem to be you know, despondent or exhausted about it all because mm. here we are again. Are all these things making a difference? So I just wanted us to just analyze what is in place to actually put gender at the top of our country's agenda and, and just your reflections about what you think about so far, 24 years into a democracy. Uh, are there concrete things that you believe are in place, are being done now, right? On, on, on the basis of which we can improve going forward after we have reflected in this whole month of, of August. Let me start with you, Mandis. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. Mm. I think the only constructive thing that is there are laws and policies. They're there on paper, mm. but they are not being implemented. So on the social cultural space, or let me say the police stations, if you go to the website of the SAPS, you'll find a lot of wonderful things. And if you are staying in Norway, and you're reading the SAPS's website, you'll think, wow, we've got the best uh, policing in South Africa. Because all the things that we want, separate areas for women to report their cases in, in privacy, um, spaces with social workers or the necessary cave, children and people with you know, vulnerabilities have uh, you know, very sensitive matters to report. You'll think all of that is there because the website says they're doing it. If you go to the Department of Labor, you'll see anything from affirmative action to um, EE e., um, and all of that, but economically, women are black women. Let's be very clear. It's not all women that are at the uh, bottom of the barrel. It's only African South African citizens. So the policies are there, the laws are there. 
um, to economically um, have women empowered deliberately, but there's no implementation. Where mm. there's implementation, it's shoddy. And where it's not shoddy, it's just, um, you know, to make the picture look good. So you have women who are used as window dressers. Why not they really genuinely? And men, men use, um, their, especially in government spaces like the president of South Africa, they, they use the, 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 the August month as a tool to, to just say things that they think women want to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My French, what, what's, your, what's your perspective? Um, actually, I agree with uh, um, uh, Mandy, sir, that in terms of the legislative framework, we have the progress uh, coming from the constitution that talks about the gender equality, gender equity, uh, with the legislation like, uh, for example, the promotion of gender equality, mm -hmm. the Maintenance Act, Customary Acts, and Soft Marriage Act, so forth. We are progressive. However, we do know that until you tackle the primary drivers uh, related to gender-based violence, for example, one of those is economy, as she already mentioned. Women mm. are excluded economically, and you do know, once you exclude women uh, if in the economy, it means that mm. you create a, a culture of dependency. And when they are dependent, it means that they will always be subservient and so forth. The mm. unemployment, which we have seen, um, 10 million of South Africans are unemployed. The majority of those women, of those uh, 10 million, are women. Mm. And they, uh, through the face of unemployment, the face of poverty, is a woman, particularly a black woman. And sadly, if you look at the stats, um, let's say in terms of uh, unemployment, the provinces where you'll find that they are the poorest, the Eastern Cape, the KZN, Limpompo, Bumalanga, and so forth. Combined, the unemployment rate is higher than the employment rate. Mm. Um, but do you think there's inertia on the side of government to tackle these issues that uh, affect women, in your view? Yes, they're, 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 there's, not, there's not enough. The mere fact that they are excluded economically, yeah. we, what, like for example, she's mentioning those who are employed, yeah. but there are those that are unemployed. And there are those that, who are, when they are seeking the jobs, there are barriers. For example, where there's this whole issue about the carpet interviews, sex yeah. for jobs. So it's not necessary that they are women are not skilled, they're not talented, yeah. they don't uh, have an effort to find a job. But we well, find that these barriers. To me, though, that your party is doing something to change that. You are in charge in the Western Cape, you are yes. in charge in the city. Yes. Can you give me one or two things that you can say to me? My party has intervened in this way or that way to the, change that, that e picture. E exactly. So the mere fact that Western Cape, fortunately I'm also in government in the Western Cape as, as in the cabinet. Uh, the mere fact that in the Western Cape, the unemployment rates is far lower than compared around the country. Mm. And if you look at the drivers of the economy, the, the contributors to the sectors, to the industry, uh, for example, in the, in the social, in the finance, in the retail, uh, women are in majority in those areas. And in the, in the Joburg, the, the, the majority mm. of the jobs that were created in the last quarter in the 2018, for example, they've been in Joburg and in Swane. So if it was not about the Western Cape and the Gauteng in terms of contributing to the employment, actually mm. the whole country would have had more unemployment than employment. Mm. Ma Ma in terms of at, at the local government level, any interventions? I mean, you guys uh, have had a, a huge voting power in Tswane and in, 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 uh, in Joburg. Quickly, what can you tell me what you have intervened there where women are concerned? Well, of course, intervening and being able to actually do something about it are two different things. But we've been very clear in terms of the most vulnerable workers, yeah. the cleaners, the security guards, and all other workers that are outsourced in the municipalities. In Johannesburg, we've already started. In fact, we disproved a myth that has been banded about by the ANC for the last 24 years, mm -hmm. that it is cheaper to outsource workers than it is to insource them. It's not true. Um, the, the mayor of okay. the coalition... Right, let's in, hold, in, hold it there, because yes. I want to know how that links to women empowerment. But I'm I want coming to, I'm, I'm coming right, to we'll that. We'll do that after the break. Let's take a break now. We're talking about uh, assessing uh, Women's Month and whether or not there is an impact uh, that all of this the focus on women uh, can actually do. So stay tuned.
Imagine if you could learn everything you need to know about life from yourself. What questions would you ask? What wisdom would you share? The Kalahari Transportier Park is a large wildlife preserve and conservation area in southern Africa. Kalahari means place of thirst. The casual workers, the mm. labor broking workers directly into the municipality. And we even disproved the myth that it's more expensive to, to, to insource them. It's not true. It's actually cheaper to have them employed directly so we can get better services out of them. But let's start on the land issue. We've been very clear on the land expropriation without compensation issue. Mm. Our um, stance is that women must be guaranteed land before men for many, many reasons. And when we say women, we primarily mean black mm. women. And by black women or African women, obviously we mean the so-called coloreds as well. Indians are clearly in their own league, and so are white people. But our top priority are the poorest, the ones who are bearing the brunt of the ANC's lack of implementation of their own policies mm. uh, that claim to empower our people. So if we start with the land, and then we work our way um, Prim primarily starting with the agricultural sector, because once you have land, you can... I mean, how When you say before men, you mean they must be prioritized at the top of a list? Yes, yes, yes. We, 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 are, <coughs> we are very clear about that. And um, you can look at any statistical data at your disposal. Majority of um, households are run by women, mm. whether those women are single, even in cases where women are married, they are still the heads of their households. They are the ones who have to be responsible for making sure that there's food on the table. Yeah. The levels of abuse tell you. In South Africa, the levels of abuse have reached a point where it's not even easy to track exactly how many women are being subjected to all sorts of abuse because fewer and fewer women are reporting cases. And therefore, the solution is to empower women, firstly and primarily. Our biggest disappointment in the current phase, right, is that, of course, we elected not to be, uh, you know, to be in government in any of the metros because essentially you can't run government if you have 11 or 12 percent. It doesn't matter how strong the coalition yeah. partners are. I mean, it, it makes life extremely difficult. But our biggest disappointment is that uh, both municipalities, even though they claim to have uh, created jobs, are really not doing much. They're not denting. They're not making a dent mm. in, in terms of the job, um, job market, especially in terms of empowering yeah. women. There's no right. plan. The DA can't give you an active plan. I'm very... Um, uh, curious about what mm. the lady yeah, from the go, DA is saying. Yeah, let, me go to, let me go to because I, I think yeah. I think it's just a lot of hot air. I, I don't or think it's real. Mm. Okay. But, yeah. uh, but my friend, yes. Uh, as before I you go in, mm -hmm. the, the, the whole empowerment thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, 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 including black economic empowerment, mm -hmm. right? Talks about broad-based empowerment, which means mm -hmm. women and so. On. How does that reconcile with what you want to do to, with women? and your policies that seem to be reneging from broad B, uh, based uh, uh, BEE? I think also we need to differentiate in terms of the, uh, the economic inclusion of everyone. Mm. Because currently, without even looking at the broad-based uh, empowerment uh, issues, you'll mm. find that there are still far women that have been left behind. The mm. rural women, the women uh, um, everywhere. That be, as I, I made an example in terms of the, the, the labor force. So, uh, as I indicated earlier, fortunately from the Western Cape, we were mm. also in government and also I'm part of the government. We have seen the progression where we'll find that the unemployment rate is far lesser than compared to national. And, but again, we have to granulate to see in terms of the data how it uh, affects fact, you, you women. Don't have, you don't have that sense now. No, I do have. I do well, have. What is the, what, the, what, how does it impact specifically on women? That, that's why I'm making an example that the... The, the sectors that are the major contributors to the GDP mm. uh, in, in the province, the wholesale and trade, will find that the majority are women. Mm. The, 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 the property, the real estate, and the business and the finance, it's 50-50. Uh, okay. Where we find that it goes, and then the social services, which is inclusive mm. of the government, but where we find that there's a discrepancy, it's, there, it's in the manufacturing, and then it goes to the agriculture. Yeah. But again, uh, just to, to piggyback what you're saying, we do know that 
until the women, you, they are in the mostly the, in the decision-making positions, mm. in the leadership, in those sectors, that's when they could be able to make a difference. Mm. Because they are the ones who are the primary caregivers. These are mm. the ones who are making more decisions at home. But what you are saying, does it apply to the other three municipalities where you are in charge? You are in charge in Nelson I, I, Mandela, I, I was trying to make Jobek, and Pretoria. I was trying to make it, yes. Yes. What, what, yes, yes, what I'm trying, yes, what I'm trying to highlight, as a government, who are implementing the DA policies, which is the DA policies that are implemented in the Joburg, are implemented in Swane, are implemented in, in, in Nelson Mandela, yeah. but of course there are other spheres of government. So you might have some also other things that are applicable to the province, that yeah. are applicable to the municipality. Now, going to the BEE, there is no one who could go and say that the issues of the imbalances of the past cannot, can be ignored. Yeah. Because people who were disadvantaged, not on the basis of whether they are rich or poor, but it's because of the color of the skin. Mm -hmm. So because of the color of the skin. Yeah. So there's no way that now you cannot readdress and such. Yeah. In Just that people are confused that the DA has come <coughs> out to say we are reversing the, the BE. Now, the DA is how rejecting yeah. ANC policy in terms of tackling the issues of the right, black going, economic empowerment. Right, let's explore more about that yes. after the break, because I want to hear what Mandisa's response to that is. We're talking yeah. about women's uh, agenda at the top of our nation's agenda. Do you think that uh, our governments are putting uh, this issue at the top, whether the local government, provinces or national? We continue the discussion after the break. At nine, we go beyond the headlines of the day and breaking news to bring you all the angles and in-depth analysis of stories that impact your life. We are on the ball with all economic stories. Our bureaus around the globe are ready to connect you to events as and when they happen. So join us every day at nine to zoom in on the day. Welcome back to Frankly Speaking. You can follow our show on hashtag Frankly Speaking. You can also tweet us at JJ Tavani at SABC News Online. Mandisa, your response uh, to, to the DA's approach, uh, saying that nothing untoward uh, with what they are putting on the table in places where they are in charge. Look, the biggest problem with BEE is that it says it, it requires 26%. You can't have a minority stake for majority of the people. That's our primary issue with BEE. Essentially, BEE is extremely necessary. We said earlier on when the show started that the ANC had the policies in place. Of course, some of them need to be beefed up. Some of them are not radical enough. Some mm. of them are just not, you know, um, hitting the mark. But the biggest issue is that they're not implementing them. So 26% mm. is a big issue. The DA doesn't have a policy on BEE. Their policy on BEE is to say, no, we are going to develop a policy. Mm. Secondly, Midval, the DA is presiding over a municipality that is very abusive to all the black areas in Midval. The black um, farmers in, mm. the, in the Midval are completely ignored. And that area can produce a lot of work. Farmers can produce product that can be processed, that can create upstream industries or downstream industries rather, to create more work, yeah. especially at the level that we're looking at. They are saying that they've improved jobs in the Western Cape. Which jobs are they talking about? The black people who are cleaning tables at uh, restaurants in Cape Town, how much are they earning? We all know that the average black worker earns around 3,500 rand a month. Until the DA can talk to those kinds of things, they're not doing anything for women. Right, let's they don't there. even have a proper policy yeah. for women. The last time the DA was asked about women, I mean, they gave us some hogwash about um, there's, there's no need for them to have specific women, right, women hear, policies. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, uh, there's yeah. a, there's a question, question mark over whether you have a proper gender policy, proper BEE policy. Address those quickly before we go to the next uh, thing. I, 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 at the beginning, I yeah. indicated that unless you focus on the primary drivers mm. that pushes women to up to that level of being subservient and dependent, mm. which is the economic inclusion, Mm. So there's no way that it could pose. It creates agency so that women could be able in the decision-making bodies and so forth. But there are always the barriers, whether patriarchal and so forth. So that's one issue. 
And then secondly, it's a stats as a evidence that shows that DA government mm. in the Western Cape, for example, has created jobs more than any. Mm. And I'm are quoting you. Are these quality jobs? That's what I'm trying to highlight. Yeah. That in terms of the stats, which is given by the SSA, yeah. where you've seen, like in the professionals, women are the majority. Mm. The, the, the leadership There's no positions. low level jobs only. No, no. That's why I'm, I'm saying to you mm. that if you only create the jobs at a very lower level, mm. you are creating the same thing. But again, the other driver is about the education. Mm. Where ANC governs, you find that the issue of the access to education and yeah. the basic and also even at the tertiary. The issue in terms of the system where even for those that are indicated to yeah. qualify for the jobs, they have to have sex. Uh, with the, those who are offering the jobs is one of also of the, right, the but now the BE again issue. Actually, do you have she, a policy or she, you just know that you don't like the ANC's don't. policy on BE? She, she agreed with me yeah. she, ag she also rejected the issue of the BE yeah. uh, ANC no, policy what is, what no, is your policy? It. No, no it says that it doesn't work we all agree yeah. I, I don't think that we, we have to go so you are still formulating one that will replace the current BE law Yes, because you cannot only put only one so side no of policy it. as such, but you're no. rejecting the one that's the, existing. The DA has yeah. got an economic policy that is inclusive of everything. Not necessarily DA. So currently now yeah. we are going into commissions where we have to piggyback in terms of what are the other issues that could be included broadly. So it couldn't be only yeah. about you only target those who are connected yeah. to those who are in the, in the party. All right, unfortunately you have party. to leave that subject now. Mandisa, the, yes. the, the, one of the things that worry society is whether or not political parties are holding their own men in those organizations mm. accountable. There were stories last week in the city press about you know, some or other accusations within the AFF, EFF, EFF, I think yeah. in the mm. Northwest or whatever. Yeah. Briefly, what can you tell me about the EFF's own approach to gender-based violence and consequences mm. meted out to your own members or leaders who are found in the wrong side? So firstly, we encourage our members if they are subjected to violence by anyone to yeah. go to a police station because them opening cases at a police station does not um, have any bearing on what the organization does internally. Mm. Secondly, based on the circumstances, say for instance we had a very unfortunate tragic, not even tragic, but like disgusting situation in Bumalanga where a, one of the PR councillors of the EFF raped a child, or was, you know, allegedly yeah. raped a child. I hate to use that word, but we, we've dealt with that issue and we've expedited it and uh, we've completed the process and we acted very you efficiently. you have a firm policy about what you we, do? Like the leader who was accused last week, are they suspended as we speak? So the first thing is that once we get the complaint on our side and mm. we verify it, because you must remember also the risk of, well, in some very minute cases, you could get a situation where, yeah. you know, maybe the story is fabricated. But so you're still investigating. We ascertain mm. very quickly. We, yeah. we, we ascertain the facts like we re reacted in the one rape situation. So we do act very quickly. Right. But yeah. I can um, also confirm that it's an issue that we've raised at a very high level in the organization. In the last... All right, let me bring, let me bring the DA to tell you what... With harassment policy, we do have yeah. sexual harassment policy. Have you implemented that? Oh, yes. We have implemented Give me an example. Um, there was a case, for example, in, in the Western Cape, mm. uh, where it was about the officials, a DA staff member, yeah, plus yeah. also a, a public representative. You've expelled uh, them? Yes. No, we have expelled, but we have to also follow the, the issues of the natural justice. So what, uh, what matters is okay. about, you make people account. And then secondly, I just want to put it clear, there is no better DA abuser or EF yeah. abuser and whatever, and abuser is an abuser. Okay. So therefore, that's why it should be making a point that no woman should be, uh, feel so badly for reporting such cases. Right. And what matters is where to account. Yes. And then lastly... Uh, yes. you, you, you're you, sure? Yes. No, lastly, you, you, you had a clip about the, the, the Minister of, of Women, Women and so yes. forth. We've got a, a Minister of Women. One has to ask the question <coughs> that how far are they doing what they're supposed to do while women are still so how far left behind? So all the right. issue is about... Yeah. Like I was trying to answer the question about... You might not have all these policies and so forth, but if there's yeah. no implementation, it cannot all be... All right, Let's, we, have to leave, we have to leave it there. Part in short, we briefly. need stronger deterrence yeah. on the criminal side. We need much stronger deterrence. We need efficient police stations. We need a non-corruptible NPA, because they're extremely corrupt, most mm. of these prosecutors. In fact, the patriarchy in South Africa mm. against black women specifically is driven by the criminal justice system. All right, we've black got to, have women's to, we have to leave it there. Unfortunately, we've run out of But Liz, mm. thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us tonight. Thank you. I hope uh, that was useful to just trigger us into believing uh, what can still be done to make a, a peaceful existence for the women of our country. Until we talk frankly again, may God bless you.